Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? What if I told you that you have all the answers within? Let's face it, no one knows you better than yourself. Okay, maybe your BFF, but your desires, what makes your soul tick, what alignment feels like, that's all within you. And if you're here, that means deep down, you believe this too. But sometimes it can get a little bit noisy with our conditioning, social expectations, that we eventually tune out that inner voice and we start seeking answers from the outside and stop trusting ourselves. What does that mean, you ask? Well, you know, your wisdom, aka intuition, your magnificent higher self, however you want to call it, is within you. It's accessible. But sometimes we can override it. So I'm here to help you quiet that noise so you can tune into that inner compass. Because the biggest secret in finding clarity, it doesn't require you to eat, pray, and love. You know the one where you sell everything to move to another country, to redefine yourself. I mean, if you feel really pulled to do so, don't let me stop you. But there are many other ways you can access that inner wisdom, and it doesn't have to be complicated. It just takes a little bit of patience. And a good way to start would be, what is that inner wisdom? What is that inner voice? Some people call it as intuition or your higher self. And it's the part of you that has an inner knowing. It knows when something is working. It's a gut feeling. And it's that... It's almost like a muscle that you need to flex. It's developing that inner trust so that you get the data from the outside world, from advice, from all your learnings, and you interpret it through that gut feeling. And it might feel different for everyone else, but that inner knowing is never going to steer you wrong. That's basically the voice that will lead you to alignment. But there is also our minds that are heavily influenced by rationale, logic, by society, by how things work or doesn't work, rules. And we might override that intuition by letting our minds take over. And I was on that boat for the longest time, which is why I love talking about this because I tuned my intuition out. I tuned my inner voice out because I was following what made sense. And in quotations, if you can't see me, (laughs) if you're not watching this video, I don't know who really watches the video, especially of me under a cover to get better soundtrack. But I think it's it's a funny joke that became a thing now. But yeah, I spent so much time overriding my my feelings, my intuition, because I thought or I was told that I was too sensitive. I was told that, you know, feelings doesn't take you anywhere. We have to be tough. We have to hustle. We have to follow the rules. We have to be loud and we have to take presence. And that's what it takes to be a leader. So all those conditioning made me the person that I became that was, again, in quotation, successful in my career, but completely misaligned because I was rejecting parts of me. And we do that sometimes because we're trying to cope, 
you just want to fit in in the society and the community and it doesn't mean and we're still learning and I think as kids teenagers and even into adulthood we're still learning we want to adapt we want to be successful but in order to have our version of success we have to be able to look inwards and ground ourselves is that actually the version of success that works for me is that my version of success or I brought into someone's ideas of success so noticing that is is such a huge pivotal moment when you're able to step back and say hey you know I also share about goals with soul is the goal that I set out to accomplish actually mine or it was given to me like Let's bring it back to my previous episode. I wanted to go into advertising because I thought with my design skills, I can change the world. And once you go into advertising and graphic design, the normal steps or, you know, the corporate ladder is becoming an art director and then you become a creative director. And eventually, I don't know how you climb to CEO, uh, executive creative director, ACD, all those different titles. And that was what I saw. Oh, that's my only way out. Except once I reach graphic design, our director, I don't want to keep going up. I had no interest in managing people. In fact, I had no interest in the projects I was working on because it was so misaligned from what I started with. And I thought that I could, I guess, fake it till I make it. I thought that, oh, if I play to the rules, then I will be happy. And I wasn't. And I, again, it was because my body tells me when I'm not in the right place. And usually you get that, the sign and whispers, whatever the message is, either from the universe, from your intuition, you get it in a whisper. You can either respond to it then, or you can wait until it tries to, you know, shake your shoulders and pull you out of that situation. Are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzled to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in their lives, so you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. Simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. Because we're not meant to live a life where we are not entirely happy. We are not meant to live out of alignment. And I know that if I had listened to, I guess, this version of myself four years ago, I would be like, what the hell is alignment? What are you even talking about? And alignment simply for me, I think it's it can be a very personal, subjective feeling, but alignment is simply using my energy, living a life, doing the things that honors who I am and that serves me and that is connected to my mission in life, my sole purpose, whatever that is. And when I wasn't living out of my alignment, I was tired all the time. I was exhausted. I was snappy. Like one of my best friends who's a project manager during the last couple of weeks before I quit or after I submitted my resignation, she's like, whoa, calm down. (laughs) Like she's never seen me snap like that. And I think I was only able to do it because she was someone close. And oftentimes we, we might take it out on the people closest to us. A bit of a divergence here, but that's what it is for me, for what alignment means. And if you still don't know what alignment means to you, you can think of the times where you're out of alignment, which is when you're usually stressed out or grumpy about something and feels like nothing is working. That could be out of alignment. And it's a journey to find that alignment. And I've shared many times that alignment is always moving, evolving with us because maybe perhaps when I went into that career, It was aligned to what I had to do back then. It was aligned to my mission. But it was time to leave after a couple of years. That's what I told myself. I would only be in advertising for a couple of years. But I convinced myself to stay. That was my mind. That was my mind telling me, 
you're making good money, you have health benefits, you're getting a consistent salary, um, you're getting recognition, all those things were my inner voice of, um, I don't think you're in the right place. But my mind was trying to rationalize and convince me to stay in a place that wasn't the best for me. And I don't see it, you know, even now looking back, I don't see it as I did something bad or any guilt or shame for staying. I think that has, well, also because I have distance, I realized that that was a process I needed to get data to understand why people stay in situations, opportunities that are not necessarily good for them so having that having that in my hindsight foresight getting a ESL moment here but knowing that looking back and looking at looking at it I I understand why I had to go through that situation so now that I can guide people or any advice or share anything to say hey it's not your fault I think compassion was the most important thing that I keep learning because I'm not, I, I think growing up, I, I've always been super strict on myself. I perfectionist, a personality to a T. I would say I'm not a control freak, but my husband will say otherwise. <laughs> so again, so many things to let go of, to heal, to, you know, constantly change and allow ourselves to do that. And that's what alignment is, right? That's also the process of finding clarity, seeing what doesn't work so you can find what works. And what works now also means, doesn't mean that it's going to work in five years. And being fluid and flexible, which is not how society is. Society, maybe it's changing now, but back in the days or, you know, to a point, you know, the nine to five, the nine to five hours is not very realistic because you can't really work nonstop for eight hours. And yeah, people take breaks in between, but we're not just meant to work. That started, if my history serves me right, in the Industrial Revolution. But now that people have families and now with technology, we're constantly connected and we cannot detach from working. And even now that I have my own business, I'm out of that environment, I can find myself falling back into that pattern if I am not aware, if I am not mindful of my actions, if I don't see if they're aligning with my intentions. Because my mind can keep me running. It can say, go, go for the goal, go for the goal. <laughs> but then if I slow down, make space to connect with my inner voice, that's when I can see, oh, Maybe today, maybe I'm pushing, maybe I'm forcing something to happen and I'm not allowing it to take fruition. And we also, you know, I can talk about this for hours, but we also think that to reach our goals, we have to work hard to make them happen. And we forget about the being. And being is something that I had to completely relearn from the moment I quit my job and I had all that space. I didn't know how to be because my being was attached to the doing. And that's exhausting. I don't know where you are in your life. Maybe you're nowhere there and that's amazing. Thank you for still tuning in, relating to me. But if you're somewhere in between when you feel like you're constantly working towards something that's not completely aligned to you, don't feel bad. I mean, it happens. But what can you do now? How can you soften and listen to where that inner compass is trying to guide you? Easier said than done. And I just wanted to wrap this up with... Don't give your power away because so often we look for answers outside. We go to doctors to tell us 
what's wrong with us. We look for personal trainers to make us better. Whatever you do, seek support, but don't give your power away. Nobody can, in quotations, fix you because there's nothing wrong with you. You might be feeling sick or unwell. That just might mean that you're a little bit out of balance and certain things need to recalibrate. That's it. That was a huge story that I learned to let go of, and I can definitely dive into that in another episode. But for today, let me leave you with this piece that I wrote a couple of years ago. From an early age, we're taught to obey, to follow and not defy authority, to have dreams, but they have to be realistic, to be innovative, but staying within the lines, to work hard, but not work smart, to be opinionated, but not too loud, to be different, but we'll be judged for being so. And by the time we're older, we're told that we're not good enough, that we don't have the experience, that we need to look a certain way or act a certain way to be happy. We are prescribed quick solutions to problems that were fed to us. We lack more than what we're worth when, in fact, we're born with a divine nature. Nobody teaches a baby to cry when they're uncomfortable. If anything, kids are so in tune with their bodies and emotions and any of us they cry when they feel sad when they feel an intense emotion they laugh with their entire body and that's something we've grown up suppressing our desires and emotions as adults we focus on always the positive and lock away all the bad we've received so much external stimuli that we've disconnected from ourselves That's not to say we should be lone wolves and not listen to anyone else. On the contrary, take on all the advice, be hungry to learn and grow. Watch others, listen to their stories of strength, vulnerability, resilience, play. Make genuine connections, be inspired, but at the end of the day, don't lose the connection to yourself. Know that you have what it takes to do what's best for you sensitized to your needs and desires. It's part of this life curriculum to make mistakes, to fall in order to grow. Our potential is not measured by our failures nor successes. Our potential stems from our desire. If there's a will, there is a way. Don't be afraid to seek support and guidance in the area that you're not your strongest suit, but don't give your power away. Coaches, teachers, mentors, friends, parents, we can all help guide you. Find someone who empowers you and not strip your essence away. What works for one might not work for another. There's a difference between doing what we're told to do versus doing something because it feels right to us. Believe in yourself and trust your process. Most importantly, know that honoring your truth is your greatest power and strength. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.